Welcome to another video where I will chat about my pencils and this time we will talk about my Derwent's. For now I have polar salts, full set, I have ink tens, I put them into this pencil case and I also have the full set. Here they are. You can see that they are well worn. But honestly, recently I started to use them less, less frequently comparing how I used them in the very beginning of my hobby when I mostly colored books by Lizzie Mary Cullen. And color softs, they were, together with Inktense, my first sets of pencils, professional pencils, modern pencils, which I purchased myself when I started to be interested in sketching and coloring. I already mentioned that when I first got them, I was absolutely in love. I will show you how they look for now. You can also see that they are well used. So I was in love because comparing to my uh, childhood pencils, they were absolutely different. I love how they pigmented, how they uh, laid on the paper and I loved that they were creamy and I didn't have anything uh, uh, to which I would be able to compare them apart from those old scratch pencils. But when I actually started to do works with them on in coloring books, when I tested them on the average paper, which we usually have in coloring books, I started to understand that a result which I got it's slightly different from what I was able to see on YouTube coloring tutorials where people used Prismacolor pencils. And I wanted that result. Also, I wasn't very happy how they behaved on smooth paper and in my first books by Johanna Basford paper was relatively smooth, so it was possible to layer only a couple of layers and they started to feel waxy. Uh, then I was totally unhappy with their green colors. I don't think that they have at least one normal green color. They have something like olive greens or even brown green, but definitely nothing which you can use for the leaves, for the grass, so I had a lot of problems with that. Yeah, they have several very nice colors. In the green range, I love their mint and grey-green colors, of course not for the leaves, but for some um, something in this color or even for the ocean water, they are beautiful and quite unique colors. Also here I love a range of um, yellow ochre brown colors, quite nice, all those terracotta, uh, peach ochre, light ochre, and also a very good uh, selection of lilac violet uh, in the pastel colors i do love this pale lavender um, bright lilac and great lavender you can see from the size of great lavender and in the dark range i absolutely love uh, it's cranberry blackberry loganberry those three pencils they are really very good also indigo is quite nice here very nice rich blue color some of the blue colors are quite helpful for the uh, snow for the clouds so they have a lot of good things but um, somehow my first not very successful experience when i realized that these pencils they are very demanding to the paper quality um, it it pushed me to put this set aside for several years. I think that after I purchased my first Prisma colors and then polychromoses, I simply hadn't touched this set for a couple of years. And only now, when I have bigger variety of books printed on various paper, and especially many books printed on very high quality paper, which has nice tools, I started to appreciate this set once more.
It's definitely far from my favorite sets, but some of the colors I started to use, especially when I need to use gray colors. Here we have nice grays. I one of the few sets when I do love uh, cold gray colors. Sorry for the noises. So for me they are helpful um, when I do stonework, bricks, uh, when I do uh, sky and cloud. And I started to use them more when I feel that tooth of the paper will be good for them. I also surprisingly discovered that they can be used in Selene, in Selena Fanning books. You know those books on printed on very thin paper, but somehow if you don't intend to layer much if you simply need good uh, coverage of the paper you can also use color softs i did couple of works where i use them more for the background not for the smaller details so uh, step by step i started to use them now more frequently and from time to time you will see them in my videos i don't think that i will use them um, just this set for complete to complete one page. I did several experiments in um, Creative Heaven Main Street and I was not very happy when I used just these pencils for the whole page. Somehow my hand starts to feel more tight when I use these pencils. I still have problems with blending and layering, so I don't recommend this set as a, a basic one. Just like a secondary, you can still find books where you can use them, but I don't think that uh, um, relationship between price and quality is normal for these pencils. I don't know why, but maybe it's because they are made in United Kingdom, but now their price in my country, if you purchase them open stock, it's higher comparing to polychromos. And it's ridiculous because they, for me, are much uh, less precious comparing to polychromos what those pencils are capable to do in coloring or in drawing and these pencils. Here you constantly have to think about paper quality. Still they have those good things, bad things. I definitely don't think that I would be purchasing another set of this one, but if I feel that my great lavender or one of those dark colors they will be even shorter, then maybe for a couple of colors I will purchase replacements. For now I just intend to use them where it's possible to spend. As usual you can see that all my red, yellow colors, they are longest in all the sets and usually blue, green colors, they are shortest. That's probably my personal choice of colors, but I have the similar thing for all my sets. So that was about color softs. At least now I am happy that I started to use some of the colors in some of the coloring books. So this set just doesn't sit idly on one of the shelves. Sometimes it still can be in work. Well, the next one are my Inktense pencils. I saw them first in the videos of Peter Hewitt, I think, on, at least that's where I got almost all my knowledge about these pencils from Peter's videos. And of course I wanted them. For me there were something magical, how they activated with water, brightness of their colors. It was something totally new for me. Usually I don't use uh, water-soluble pencils in my books. I will talk about this later. It's another maybe big mistake, another mm, thing which I need to explore more, but usually if I need something water-soluble I use watercolor paints and then I work on the details with pencils. But these pencils they really provided new experience for me because they were able to be uh, soluble without those visible pencil strokes and color of the pigment remained very bright and very intense. So I think that I spent maybe a couple of years when these pencils they were my main tool for coloring, especially when I was very invested in the books by Lizzie Mary Cullen. But um, it was it also had second 
meaning probably. So I got used to use them in more simplified way. You know that books by Lizzie Mary, they have quite unique style and you don't need complicated layering or blending. Those are already quite complicated, so you just need bright, clear color, good vibrancy and it's enough. So I I got used to use these pencils in more simplified way without using them delicately in layers, without trying to blend them in more complicated way. And later when I started to be tired from the books by Lizzie Mary, I also put the set aside because I didn't know how to use them properly in the books of other style. I tried to use them several times. For example, here in Daydreams I did this one, but still I maybe I was afraid that such bright, vibrant colors, they have quite limited usability in the books, that quite often I don't want to have such an intense colors and I didn't know how to use them for them for all styles of the books, so I was confused how I can use them more in coloring books. But pictures which I did with them, I really love them. They have these interesting colors, I think that you can recognize them everywhere. If picture was colored with intense, you can always say it from their colors. Oh my. My second experience with them was when I started to use them properly on real paper, which was close to watercolor paper. How they behave on a typical uh, color book paper and how they behave on the paper with normal watercolor surface, it's totally different things. On the good paper, they indeed are very close to watercolors. Mm, they can be spread it better, you can create better gradients from very light um, transparent colors to the very intense, so it's easier to play with water and to get a result which is more <laughs> close to the real watercolor thing. I used them here on the paper, which was indeed very good for them, and that's where I started to realize that I need to give them second chance. But still, it's a pity that I don't use them frequently. Maybe it will be my task for the next month is to start to select books where I can use these pencils in a new way. And to be reacquainted with them once again, because I think that now I even started to forget what are my favorite colors, my favorite color combos. Fortunately, I started to use them a little bit here on these watercolor postcards by Karolina Kubikowska. So I think that maybe I will grab my full-size book by Karolina and I will try to use Intense there. Together with watercolors, they will be perfect for Carolina style and for that paper. Some of these pictures I did, at least for some of the elements, with ink tents. And yeah, paper here also is important. I also wouldn't recommend this set as a basic one. They have limited ability to color in many books where you can't add water or where you simply don't have such a intense colors, it will it would be quite complicated to use them. But in some of the books with thick watercolor paper, they can create miracles. And I think that as they are unique pencils, they definitely deserve to be in each and every collection. Yeah, you need to learn them better before you actually grab how to use them. But it's very fun to play with them. And I promise that I will try to use them more frequently because I miss them. I remember how much I enjoyed using them and I think that they deserve to be used more frequently. So that's my promise to myself. Next. I have another two sets by Derwent. I have graffitis and I have drawings. You can see that they all are in old boxes now. All these boxes, they have different designs. So uh, they are already, for a long time already in my 
art supplies collection. Well, set on the left I absolutely love. Again, I purchased it um, almost in the beginning of my hobby and at the moment I loved how they behave on the paper. I think that I fall in love with them even from the first swatches. How smooth, creamy and soft they are, it's impossible to explain. They are probably the softest pencils I own and I do love the, that they are thick with very thick core, very pleasant to put on the paper, but when I got them I was afraid to color fur and animals. If I colored something it was like tiny cats and mouse and mice in the size of couple of centimeters and there I definitely didn't need such pencils. And I was under uh, a mistake impression that with such creaminess with such softness it would be impossible to layer them more than a couple of layers. I was sure that paper would be burnished. And also I was under a huge mistake that with such softness it would be impossible to do real texture, to draw individual hairs on the fur or feathers. So I didn't know, I didn't understand how the set could be for um, actual for animals. I use them more for the uh, buildings um, because they have quite a lot of colors which can be used for the stones, for the sky, for uh, various bricks, terracotta, anything you want to do. Gray colors, ochre colors, sanguine terracotta, um, muted gray green colors, a lot of nice things. So I use them mostly for landscapes and only later when I finally tested them for doing animals I realized that despite all their softness they are very good for layering and for the texture. Even on the terrible paper in Selena Fennec animals I still was able to use them and they are absolutely perfect for all the animals. I did longer fur, I did shorter fur, uh, color range is perfect for all the animals. I also use them on these postcards, so they can be used on various papers from thin to the regular, normal, even watercolor texture paper. I use them here, I use them here, here and here I think so. I use them quite frequently when I do need to do animals here. And I also use them in Selena Fanning books when I need um, to do stones and bricks. Their grey colors are one of the best also. Well, so this set it's definitely on my top list. Probably among all the uh, Derwent sets which I own now, this one is still my favorite, which I use more frequently. Um, of course, it's not universal also because of the limited color palette, but this one I definitely can recommend. Uh, quite frequently I receive questions, uh, do I plan to purchase newest pencils by Derwent? Uh, they light fast, their chroma flow and I don't even remember other brands which they uh, produced, manufactured recently. And I don't think that I intend to do it. Because, as I said, I don't think that their price is reasonable comparing to the other brands which I am more curious to test. I am more intended to save money to test current dash pencils or even to purchase myself several more sets of uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos, maybe even Albert Durer with the same colors but with slightly different texture. And with Derwent I don't understand how they have um, quality problems because in all my sets in drawings and in color sorts I have those problems when inside of the core of the pencil you have uh, included different color like recently I used this pale cedar you can see which color is this one and inside of the core I had uh, like terracotta or sanguine uh, small parts included 
you color something very light green and with your pencil strokes appear some orange terracotta and it's terrible. It's okay for me in the coloring books, but I don't know what would be what would be artists who create commission do with such thing. And I had similar problems with the set with several pencils here. In the very beginning when I just started to use them it wasn't such a big problem. Now when I started to sharpen them, them more inside of the core I started to um, encounter this problem more frequently. So it's maybe somewhere inside of the pencil core here and in several pencils in Colorsoft also. And I don't think that it's a good thing such strange things in the quality of professional grade pencils. And it didn't help to gain trust in Derwin brand. Also when I purchased graffitins I discovered when I opened this box, you know the box usually they are sealed under the plastic wrapper. So when I opened it one of the best colors, I think that it was aubergine probably. Um, maybe juniper. So one of the dark violet colors, which I absolutely love, it was split into two halves. New pencil. So it was again manufacturing problem. There was two wooden halves. They didn't uh, um, glue it nicely together. Of course, I contacted their support and their support was, was very good, so after a couple of weeks they sent me from United Kingdom to Ukraine replacement pencil. But still, I don't think that if they have such a problem that uh, again it gained inside of me more trust for their new pencil sets. Maybe I need to watch more uh, reviews of Lightfast and of Chromaflow. Lightfast, I think, the, at least before the war, they were available in our art supply shops individually. Maybe I would purchase myself a couple of pencils with some unique colors. But I don't think that I want to spend to invest into the full sets. Derwent definitely isn't my favorite manufacturer, at least for now. As I said, now I am more inclined to save for Carandash or simply to purchase myself replacements of Prismacolors and Polychromoses and to quit those <laughs> problems when you always need or want to test new sets. Well, talking about graphitins. They also are quite interesting. When I purchased them, it was totally out of curiosity, not <laughs> because I needed them. I knew that they would have very limited um, usability uh, in my coloring books because they are useless on many uh, books where you have seen paper. They are water soluble and they have quite a limited amount of colors. They are all muted, so if you use them directly on the paper, there is a mix of color and graphite, so all colors are gray with some pigment. When you take pigment directly from the pencil core, you can get clear pigment, but you can't do in such a way the whole page. You can simply add some bright accents. Uh, of course, it can't be as a ba main basic set for your coloring, but to experiment, to create some interesting backgrounds or to experiment on the paper which is good for watercolors, they can be really nice. So it's another one of the goals for myself to start using them together with Inktense. In Karolina Kubikowska or similar books where you have paper good for watercolors and where subject of the picture or style of the artist. It allows to work in some muted and dark colors. They are very compatible with Inktense and that probably was another reason why I purchased them. To add darker colors to the very in in bright Inktense pencils. Uh, now I want to show you some of my works. You can see that I didn't use them a lot. As I said, usually I am not a big fan of using water-soluble pencils in my books. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's just uh, I feel that I do 
two the same work two times first coloring with pencils then applying water and then starting to add additional details and contrast where water slightly changed uh, color balance or um, contrast sometimes i simply feel that for myself it's quicker to work with watercolors first if you get in the end the same result as with water soluble pencils then with watercolors it's simply easier for me to blend to work that's probably why but graffitins with their unique colors i do love to use even if amount of works i did it's very limited uh, let me show you i think that the first work where i tested them for the uh, background it was in the Seasons by Hannah. Somehow my bookmark had disappeared, but it's here. I do love that they, uh, uh, when they are activated by water, you also can get result very similar to watercolors without pencil strokes. So I do love how they behave with water. I also started to blend them with regular watercolor pencils if I didn't have colors which I needed in this limited set. So they behave well with other pencils. And you can layer them. I usually let the first background layer to dry and then I start to apply second layer, at least here when I wanted to use darker color near the main image to add some shading near flowers near frame so i discovered that actually they can create interesting backgrounds second time when i used them it was in midnight masquerade again by hannah carson here and i think that it was really one of the best examples in my books where I use these graffitins. I don't think that with any other pencils I would be able to, to do this um, pastel, dreamy and in the same time muted background with interesting shades of grey, grey, blue, grey, brown. So that's where I started to appreciate them more. And the third example which I want to show you it was in Botanicum. In Botanicum, you know that <coughs> um, I struggle a lot with all these pictures, so in the end I simply dis decided to use it for my experiments. And surprisingly, a page which I did with gravitins, it's one of my favorites. I do love to use this contrast, which you can get from using for some of the elements those dark and muted colors like background or leaves here and then some very bright elements which you can use with prismacolors for example with their shiny waxy texture these pencils they create matte texture together with wax based pencils they look quite interesting on the page so that's where I used graffitins and I also wanted to show you couple of other pictures where I experimented with ink tents. Here are flowers, leaves, and here are also flowers and leaves I did with ink tents. Uh, only the backgrounds, this one is, I think that here I used neon colors and here I used watercolor. But the main image I did with ink tents, so they also can be used for, this, for such fantasy results but you can see that colors are so bright that you have to be quite careful in your color planning i do love bright colors but sometimes even for me they can be like oh my god <laughs> why it's <laughs> so bright and how i can manage to color everything to get a well-balanced result so that was my complicated uh, relationship with Derwent products. I'm still loving all I I love all my set. I'm fond of them and I have quite good memories how I started to use them in my books. I definitely need to somehow to reload my mind. Maybe not now when I'm constantly stressed. Maybe later when I will be more... Uh, relaxed and more free to experiment with different pencils, different 
books. Now I mostly color what I am more familiar with, which is more for relaxation, not for experiments. But I think that graffitins and ink tents and drawings, they have big uh, uh, possibilities, they have big potential. I just need to think out of the box, which books I can use them and to experiment. I think that Ink Tense can be perfect for my Wildecorn book, you know, that huge beauty in A3 size, which I did a review last month. There I think that fantasy style is quite suitable to use Ink Tense, especially for some of the fantasy align parts of the uh, book, so I think that I definitely will try to use them there. And with drawings I definitely intend to do some of the pictures in Kerberazana's Fragile World. When I didn't have them with me in February and April, I missed them so much. I wanted to do a couple of pictures in <laughs> Fragile World. I imagined all the colors I could use, so now maybe it's time to use them more. This set I definitely can recommend if you can afford Derwent pencils. I think that you will love them, even if you are not into coloring animals, for the landscapes, for the architecture, and even for portraits, because I do love to use a couple of pencils here. Uh, it's wheat and light sienna. Because of their softness, creaminess, they are very good as blenders when you do fair skin tone and even mm, a more yellowish skin tone. Uh, you can also use ochre for darker skin tones. So they work very well as a last step to blend everything, to mask a little bit of visible pencil strokes. So I love to use them to smooth everything. If I don't have with myself my carandash or my blender, then I can use these two pencils and they always provide a very good finish on the fair skin tone. Well, thank you for listening to the second part and in the third part we will talk about my uh, maybe less popular budget pencils. I accumulated a lot of them those Star Joy, those Black Widow, Arteza, of course, um, and even those pencils about which I almost forget. So maybe now I will give them second chance. Again, sorry for the very slow talking. Again, I'm melting here. I hope that after a couple of days we will have better weather with at least some rains. Maybe it will be easier to think and to talk. Thank you and until my next videos.